Conoce de cerca a los líderes de la comunicación y el medio empresarial, cuyo talento los ha llevado a ocupar los cargos ejecutivos a través de los cuales han transformado la forma de hacer negocios y dar valor agregado a sus marcas. Escucha el programa Estamos en Comunicación con Carlos Muñoz todos los viernes de 10 a 11 de la mañana por Radio Anáhuac 1670M. Eleva tus sentidos. Hi, dear Laura, chairman of RIS, Position and Pioneers, and all RIS marketing, marketing Guru's daughter. How are you? Good. How are you? Terrific. Thank you to be for here. joining us in this uh, Zoom meeting. Yes. Laura, if you're ready, let's talk about what the brands must do in terms, in terms of positioning during and after this coronavirus to keep engaged with customers. What do you think about? Well, listen, this has reinforced the importance of positioning. Positioning was always important, but sometimes it takes a crisis like this to kind of shake you up and everyone goes back to the basics. And the basic, uh, basics of what a brand is, is standing for something in the mind. And a brand has to look and a company has to look at itself and say, do our brand stand for anything? Are consumers looking at them? Do they know what they are? Or Are they in categories that are important <laughs> anymore? I mean, we've changed a lot in terms of the world. I don't think people are going to look at a cruise vacation the same ever, right? Or at least not for the next couple of years. So those are category issues. It's not necessarily the brand's fault, the carnival, um, but it's in a category that people are starting to question and worry about in terms of the latest virus. Um, again, many companies have you know gotten into too many things over the years. And so when a crisis like this hits, it You know, it's a it's a, a reawakening that, that people are going back to the things that they trust the most, that they care the most about, and that are most meaningful to them. And really what that comes down to is just do they stand for anything? Are they the real thing in their category, for example? And is that category important? What we see a lot is, you know, shifting online. People aren't going out and so that they're buying online. It's not that they're looking um, for the for the companies that did well traditionally what they're doing online, they're going to Amazon, the online leader to buy their stuff. And so you have to be ahead of this. You can't play catch up necessarily. Laura, do you think it's possible to create and positionate a new brand in the consumer in the consumer mind during coronavirus? Well, listen, there's there's not a lot of, um, you know, there's there's so much noise out there and there's so much talk and worry and concern about the coronavirus uh, that there there isn't a lot of space and opportunity to get in there with a new message unless it's, you know, is something that is truly important and, and relevant and can break through the clutter. So it really is a depending on a case by case basis. You know, one brand that has broken right through is the one right here, Zoom, right? Our world changed in a second and All of a sudden from you know my grandparents or my husband's parents and my kids grandparents and Peoria are on zoom suddenly they probably never would have been on zoom but because of this it forced them into it it's forced us into a lot of technologies and so in places like zoom or ordering online where people might not have in different categories they're doing it in all categories they're going to grocery stores and doing pickup right and that that has pushed those and accelerated the progress in certain categories so there are opportunity zoom is a great one another one is the rise of peloton now this was a brand that was doing it incredibly well it was a high-end bike right that you can do in your home and and there was a cost involved but now that we're stuck in home a lot more people decided to go ahead and make that investment um, and and they wisely as well gave a free test out so people could test test it and use it the way zoom is as well and that's uh, growing those brands enormously especially in the case of uh, Zoom, we can create that value to our brands or products in this crisis time. And how, how do you think we can, we can get it, uh, Laura? Well, you know, Zoom is a great a great example, and it's one we talk about a lot in terms of the importance of narrowing the focus. Before coronavirus, you know, we didn't know about Zoom. Well, it, you know, we didn't Incredible. know about it, but the brand was was born and created by narrowing the focus. Listen, you know, Skype, and there were many, a WebEx, many people had video options available to their wide range of products and services. But Zoom focused on making the very best video <laughs> conference, right? And they made it very simple, very clear, very video focused. Um, and that's a great way to build a brand. Many brands no, don't build brands by adding lots of things. They focus on one feature, one benefit. For example, Twitter narrowed 
the focus to 140 characters. It wasn't everything. Instagram you narrowed the focus to just photos. You didn't just post anything like on Facebook. You could only post photos. And in, initially, it was one photo at a time, right? So narrowing the focus is a great way to build a brand. And you see many examples of that um, all over. Yeah. Laura, please share with us. What's your point of view of legendary brands like Coca-Cola, Pfizer, NFL, Nike, and others are reacting to coronavirus crisis in terms of, of communication? And if you think that these companies were prepared to face one situation like COVID? Well, listen, um, you know, nobody was prepared to face this situation, that's for sure. Uh, How do you nobody think about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Um, you know, uh, it's amazing. If you're just driving around, we don't go out much, but when we do, we see billboards. Every brand is saying, you know, to, we're, we're in this together. Everyone's put out sort of an ad or a statement, many ads, many emails. My goodness, every email, every company has emailed me saying they're, they're worried about me and they're working hard. Uh, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but most people ignore it. It becomes like wallpaper. It doesn't do your brand a whole lot of value and benefit. Um, if they trusted you before, they're going to continue to trust you in the future. They're not going to change their mind necessarily on Corona unless you did something wrong. Um, and, and most companies, and nobody's done anything wrong for the most part. Um, it is not a, a fault situation. It's an unfortunate situation. So, you know, I think it depends on the, on the case. For Coca-Cola, I mean, you know, continue sort of a low level of advertising but you certainly don't want to go over the top talking about Corona. Uh, you want to keep your employees safe and, and know in the long term that, that brand is going to be fine. It's going to be come back. People are going to go out and drink Coca-Cola. They're going to stay home and drink Coca-Cola. Um, but, you know, their long-term worry is more about the category itself declining. People worried about sugar and, and artificial sweeteners than, than Corona itself. In other cases, I think there's some reinforcement that brands can make. Um, you know, you see some nice cases where, for example, time and all, you know, going out and talking about healthcare workers. They have a strong connection, you know, with nurses and doing other things in the past. Um, if you could reinforce that, you know, that's fine, making a, a big change. Or I think Nike. Nike has a strong connection, obviously, to the Olympics, and the Olympics were greatly impacted. And I think some of those messages talking about the athletes, highlighting the athletes, um, you know, the, all their connections with those athletes, people do enjoy seeing that. And that's what leaders, um, you know, are very good at doing, of reinforcing their leadership their connection to these big events like uh, the like the Olympics and you know certainly for when we come back um, enjoying things like the NFL as a joint shared fan experience. Do you think it's important to be more proactive to reactive? I think you want to stay steady, as a matter of fact. I don't think you really want to go too far in either direction. Um, I think for some brands, like we talked about already, for Peloton and Zoom, this was an opportunity to tout the benefits of their product or service. Um, and it was also something that people were interested in. And so not to, to look like you're taking advantage of the situation, but getting your message out there in a continued and simplified way. Um, you know, for, for other brands, I don't, I think you want to just stay steady, um, kind of like we're all doing. You want to hunker down at home. You want to do um, what you do at the very best and stay true to that and reinforce that in terms of, you know, for Coca-Cola, perhaps, you know, enjoying those small moments together. Uh, you know, open happiness and, and the core of their brand is about that. And so to do that is fine. For other cases, you know, I think, you know, trying to trying too hard can look a little inauthentic. You know, Hershey bars, for example, you know, giving away uh, candy bars to, to first responders. I, I don't know. Do they really need candy? <laughs> um, you know, maybe they like it, I suppose, but, you know, you don't want to look like you're trying to take advantage. On the other hand, you have toy makers that are now making, you know, little, little toys uh, of doctors and nurses for kids to play with because these are heroes. These are first responders. I think that that is a nice, sweet, authentic thing um, for a brand to do. The brands must be resilient at, at this crisis time. Do you think uh, this is possible? Um, sure. I mean, I think if you are, it, it, it is, you know, if you were a brand in trouble before the crisis, you're a brand in big trouble during the crisis, right? If you were a brand that was, you know, doing well before the crisis, you know, you're going to, you know, going to hold steady and you're going to wait for things to, to calm down. You know, most importantly during this crisis, and I think, you know, in general, it's important, it's even more important now, is the power of PR. 
Uh, it's not about what you say in advertising that you know consumers are going to be affected or moved by. Truly, it's not. Uh, the big brands and the ones that are making the best moves and, and best word of mouth are those that have their CEOs that are out there that are talking and they're doing a really good job. And you see, you know, channels like CNBC, for instance. You know, all the major um, CEOs are out there. They're they're great spokespersons for their brand for their companies, talking about obviously safety and the impact of their employees and the economy and all these things, um, as well as you know, reminding consumers of what their brands are and what they stand for. Lara Rees, Chairman of Rees Position and Pioneers, thank you so much. Esta fue una emisión más del programa Estamos en Comunicación con Carlos Muñoz. Carlos Muñoz, un programa con mensaje transmitiendo desde Radio Anáhuac 1670M, Eleva Tus Sentidos.